Uh, this is an extremely concerning situation. I don't think anyone in the United States government, Americans, do not support actual Nazis or white supremacists. I know I certainly do not. You asked multiple questions. I did not ask been, him a question. You certainly Mr. did. You said, did Raskin. you see this? Time has expired. Gentle ladies, time has expired. Chair now recognizes Mr. Frost from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I get into it, it's interesting to hear my colleague just now talk about disavowing white supremacists. When in 2022, you she spoke at an event led by white supremacists and white nationalist Nick Fuentes, and when asked about it, doubled down on it and said, we're going to focus on people, not labels. So get out of here with that damn hypocrisy. And Dr. Damn! But my colleague um, from Georgia... She talked about misinformation, and I, I don't know what she was talking about. But nevertheless, we can look at her own tweets, and we can find plenty of misinformation. When the visual aids come out, you best believe I'm set. Popcorn out at the ready. But the biggest problem that we have is we have people that sit in this chamber, and they spread the misinformation. <laughs> been a tough week for the representative from Georgia, hasn't it? First, it was quite possibly the most striking example of how reprehensible she is viewed these days with the fact that Fox News turned on her and declared her, and I quote, an idiot. That Trump or not, the Republican Party, Republican voters are supporting his policies. It's high time someone in the Republican Party told Marjorie Taylor Greene to turn all that bombastic self-serving showmanship and drama queen energy on Democrats and stop trying to defeat her own party. When Fox News are brandishing you as an idiot, what are the rest of America thinking? To the fact that the effort she spearheaded to impeach Secretary Mayorkas failed yet again. But it only got worse as she was forced to come face to face to face with who I can only describe as the Gen Z slash millennial democratic evangelists. And each of them, well, they had their words for the abhorrent representative from Georgia. Uh, this is an extremely concerning situation. I don't think anyone in the United States government, Americans, do not support actual Nazis or white supremacists. I know I certainly do not. Interesting to hear my colleague just now talk about disavowing white supremacists. When in 2022, you she spoke at an event led by white supremacists and white nationalist Nick Fuentes, and when asked about it, doubled down on it and said, we're going to focus on people, not labels. So get out of here with that damn hypocrisy. And Dr. But my colleague... Um, from Georgia, she talked about misinformation and I, I don't know what she was talking about, but nevertheless, we can look at her own tweets and we can find plenty of misinformation, but we're just going to go through one specific tweet. Now, she said that we need to work with Israel to track down the serial numbers on any U.S. weapons used by Hamas against Israel. Dr. Snyder, I, I may be going out on a limb, but are you aware that that was actually just propaganda that was put out and there actually were not U.S. weapons that were being used by Hamas as she attempted to uh, insinuate in this tweet? I mean, we, we first of all, I appreciate the, the clarification. I knew that the question, who were the American presidents, was going to be the toughest one I got from that <laughs> side. So I appreciate your Understood. helping me out. Um, the, uh, yes, I mean, obviously there what you have is a typical example of American Russian messaging where the implicit idea is supposed to be we shouldn't give weapons to Ukraine because they're going to end up going somewhere else. There's no evidence for that. It's hard to think of an example where American weapons have been leveraged with such success as on the Ukrainian battlefield. Thank you so much. In fact, for some people, especially people that serve on the committee, they may be surprised to know that it's actually a former Russian president and Putin's sidekick, Dmitry, and I don't want to slaughter his name, so I'm going to say Dmitry M., who actually she quote tweeted. See, the problem that we're having and the reason that we're bringing up Russia as well is because Russia is a threat as well as China. So we are not going to sit here and pretend as if it's only one or the other. But the biggest problem that we have is we have people that sit in this chamber and they spread the misinformation. If it was left in Russia or China, whatever. But the problem is that you have people that sit in positions of power and they they 
they have a two million dollar budget. You think that they would call on some staff to find out if they were telling the truth about the things that they're putting on social media, but instead it works for their rhetoric. Now it's one thing to call attention to her vile rhetoric and disinformation, but it's another to further highlight that she's not an anomaly. In fact, she's upheld as a beacon of level-headed governing in the Republican Party. Don't take my word for it. Take former speaker. Yeah way back, you need to go back. Kevin McCarthy's words. I think they made a mistake by not funding Israel earlier. I would utilize it. We have the ability to help Ukraine with no American troops. That's what's been happening. No, but but Mr. Speaker, time, we know that. But, but just people that you really like, that are your friends, conservative Republicans, are no way want to vote for Ukraine aid. So does Speaker Johnson just get Democrats, a handful of Republicans, and pass it anyway? And if that well, does in fact happen, Marjorie Taylor Greene says he, she's going to look to recall him like what, uh, what Matt Gates did to you. No, but what she's doing is much different than what Matt Gates is do, did. Um, she didn't make it privileged, so it's not up for a vote. And the one thing I've always found about Marjorie is she's a very serious legislator that deals with policy. And the best way to deal with anyone like that is sit down and talk to them. I don't believe the speaker has spoken to Marjorie. I think if you sit down and discuss, you understand you have Congress that you don't control all. You, you, you have to find common ground in between. And that can be done. Those are two conservatives that can do it. But the one which certain members of the Republican Party who opted to quit rather than be associated with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene had some words in response. You've worked with her more recently. D does, does what he say add up to you at all? And Well, I think Kevin is more, much more experienced talking to Marjorie about policy than, than I do, first of all. Uh, secondly, uh, my experience with Marjorie is people have talked to her about not filing articles of impeachment on, on President Biden before he was sworn into office, on not filing articles of impeachment that were groundless uh, on other uh, individuals in the Biden administration. Um, and she was never moved by that. She was always focused on her social media account. And, and Moscow Marjorie is focused now on this Ukraine issue and getting her talking points from the Kremlin and making sure that, that she is popular and she is getting a lot of coverage. She represents exactly who the modern day GOP are. A dumpster fire of disinformation, lies, and conspiracy theories that they then set alight themselves to distract from the fact that they've done nothing as a majority, nothing but failed impeachments and the abolishing of any bipartisan legislation to appease said cult leader. Oh, except for the fact that they like to vote against legislation and then post for pictures taking credit for it. Now, I want to address something else that went on in this committee by another member. And I, I say this as someone whose grandparents uh, escaped the Holocaust. So my grandmother was part of the kinder transport out of Germany. Uh, her parents were killed in Auschwitz. My grandfather, her husband escaped Poland from the pogroms. Um, you know, the idea that we pretend that behavior is acceptable and regular there are no concentration camps in Ukraine. They're not taking babies and shooting them in the air because they're Jewish. There's no gas chambers. There's no ovens. They're not railing people in. They're not ripping gold out of people's mouth. They're not taking stuff out of their home. They're not trying to erase a people. They're Ukrainians. Stop bringing up Nazis and Hitler. The only people who know about Nazis and Hitler are the 10 million people and their families who lost their loved ones, generations of people who were wiped out. It is enough of this disgusting behavior using Nazis as propaganda. You want to talk about Nazis? Get yourself over to the Holocaust Museum. You go see what Nazis did. It's despicable that we use that and we allow it and we sit here like somehow it's regular. And yet they have the unmitigated goal to claim that Democrats are the ones that get nothing done. Disappointed are you at the speaker? Um, Barry, I mean, I'm, I'm well past the point of uh, giving grace here. I haven't made up my mind yet. Each one of these, each one of these is a legislative session. So this will be this 107th Congress. That's the first year of the 107th Congress, the second year of the 107th Congress. See that one down there at the end? Barely, that's us, all right? We're not doing anything. 
we're not, and by the way, the things we are passing are mostly post offices and, and the like. We did a couple of big things, the National Defense Authorization Act, which is done every year and has been for, I don't know, decades. But in terms of bills passing to make a difference to the American people, we're not doing it. And that's because we've become so hyper uh, I mean, I know that politics has long been known as the art of the possible. Now it's the art of the impossible, which is how can I introduce legislation that can't possibly win, but which excites my base, which gets my wing to be excited about what I'm doing. How can I pass things? How can I introduce legislation that therefore will never become law? And we have more and more people that have gone to Washington to make noise, not to make law. And, uh, and I frankly, uh, I'm looking at what it would be like to be in the Senate for the next seven years, and that gets something done. And that's not for me. Uh, I want to get stuff done. I'm glad that I was there during a time when bipartisanship worked and we got a lot of things done. But I think those days are over for a while. I'm not sure when it will change, but I don't see that happening for a while. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.